I'm going to take us through the installation of the Digisender iMedia system and this is the kit here which I've unpacked. This is the main console and let's just take a quick look at this. The first thing we have here is the power supply connection which is pretty straightforward. We've got an Ethernet connector here which you can use or not as the choice may be because you have the Wi-Fi uh, built in as well. We've got one H HDMI out connector that connects obviously to your TV and we've got two USB ports here. These allow you to connect a mouse and a keyboard um, for rim well, we'll talk about it a little bit later as we get into setting it up and you've also got an audio out connector here. So we'll come back to this. I'm now going to show you how to connect this up and run it from your mobile phone. There are many ways in which you can communicate with this device and get your media on your TV. So the first we're going to choose is the mobile phone and then we'll move on to other machines around the office here such as the laptop and uh, how you can connect from even office PCs or other computers on the home network. Okay, so I've connected the HDMI and the power supply. They're the only two connections that I've now made and we've got some very important information come up on the screen here. You can see firstly the SSID, this is the Wi-Fi SSID, so we'll show that uh, being connected to in just a moment. And more importantly as well, we've got the server IP address. That is allocated when you make a connection and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so this, this particular phone is the uh, Samsung Android phone. So simply go into the system settings, make sure your Wi-Fi is switched on, which we are here. I'm just going to connect the Wi-Fi. Uh, does a network scan. You can see up comes Digisender iMedia. We connect to that. And you can see now that that is making that connection. It's now connected and it's telling me down here it is. So now this phone is connected via Wi-Fi to the uh, Digisender iMedia. Let's back up from there. Let's go to our audio player. Now on the Samsung here, our DLNA audio player is All Share. So we click the All Share. Let's have a look for some music. Up comes our music and we can just click any particular track down there. Now it's asking me to which device I want to play this to and of course we want to play it to the smart sender so we select smart sender. Now what you'll see is that that audio file is now being played to the Digisender iMedia, in effect your TV. Okay so this is the uh, this is another Android phone, this is the HTC Desire. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is go into the settings. Um, that's to make the Wi-Fi connection. So settings, wireless networks, make sure our Wi-Fi is switched on. Wi-Fi settings here. And there we can see it's done a network scan and it's found Digisender iMedia. It's not actually connected to it at the moment, so we're going to just connect to that network and just watch that. Should disconnect from the top network? Yep. And there we go, we're now connecting to the Digisender iMedia network. So whilst that's doing that, I'll just have a look down here. I just want to show you something a little bit extra in the advanced tab here for Wi-Fi networks. It's important not to have you static IP checked. And you'll see down, down the bottom here, DLNA Auto IP is selected. These are Default settings, so unless you've been in there and changed them, they should look just like that. So let's get back out of there, out of the menu system, go back to the home, and on this particular phone, our default DNNA media player is called Connected Media. So on this one, I'm going to choose again some more music, have a look around. And up the top here, you can see we've got a choice. We can play to Smart Sender or we can play to the phone itself. So we just back up from there. And you can see it's automatically playing what's on here. So let's back up. Let's choose Photos. 
And these are loads of photos, album covers and such like, which for some reason are in my photos. Let's have a look here. And there's a nice photo scene photo. And that one is now displaying on Smart Sender. And you can see the image has now displayed over there. Now I think we have another. You can forward them. You've got some controls. Now DLNA Media Players, they, the controls and the features and functions that they offer vary between the various types of media player. So you can choose which one you want. I've got a photo scrolling function, it seems, on this one. Um, let's just back up from there and back up again and again and let's look at videos on this one we've got I just need to flick down here I'll try and find a video that might be of use to us and in fact here's one of the Olympic torch coming through our local village here so playing on the mobile phone and being transferred through the Digisender iMedia to the TV you see here. And there we can see a video file. Okay, so now we're going to connect the iMedia unit to our home Wi-Fi network. In this case, it's our office network. So I've made a hardwired connection, Ethernet connection here to our ADSL router. I connect up the power and wait then for that. Just those few seconds for that to boot up. Okay, the iMedia unit has now booted up, so I'm going to start the application on my laptop here and click the drop down box and click this settings icon here which takes us off to the user interface within the iMedia unit and this is where we now set it to station mode enable station mode our network here at the offices is simply called AEI and the password is a 13 digit password it can only accept 5 or 13 so make sure your ADSL router has a 5 or 13 digit password. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, that's 13. I'm going to disable the timeout function because of the number of machines that we've got here. So we're all set. Click the set button to save those settings and that restarts. The iMedia unit is automatically now reconfiguring itself and in just a moment I'll disconnect the Ethernet cable. Okay, that's made a successful connection to the Wi-Fi network. We're now in station mode with only three lines of uh, uh, text down the left-hand side. So I'm going to just power down the unit, remove this Ethernet cable and now we are ready now to boot up in station mode. I'll shut this small app now. That will need to reconnect. And now that we've done this, we don't ever have to do it again. It will remember its settings and some of the exciting features that we can now run through are just about to come to life. Okay, we're now booted up and the most important point we can see we're in station mode with just three lines of text down the left hand side of the screen. We can start the PC to TV program here. Um, I can have a look at that, that's looking cool. Uh, press the play button and we're now relaying our desktop. There's a bit of screen, res uh, readjust the screen resolution here to suit the iMedia device. Once that's rendered correctly, then you see it on the, on the main TV. So, the laptop can be anywhere in your home where you have Wi-Fi. It has this Wi-Fi connection to our access point. Let's take a look at some media. I'll open up the browser here and let's go off to digisender.tv. 
and take a look at what we're offering. Click the radio tab and from here you have something in the region of 50 odd thousand radio stations. Uh, it's very easy to navigate down the left hand side here you can see if you want to choose a station from the UK they're all listed there. If we take a look at the catch up TV facility uh, this is a very convenient means of identifying the most popular means of uh, accessing catch-up TV. We'll click the BBC iPlayer, that takes us to the big screen version, which is very easy to navigate. And we can click something here, let's just do this one here. And that takes us off to an episode of EastEnders, it seems. Launches in full screen mode. Let's go back to our Digisender TV website and click the live TV. This is a very convenient means of having a look, see what's on TV for the evening. Um, on channel 4, heaven knows, there we can click that and have a closer look at what that program's all about. And for example, some of these streams. Uh, some of these channels do in fact give us a live stream, so let's click ITV3 and that should take us then to a stream and on that, when that decides to start, we can just click the full screen logo If you're looking for support, then that's really important. Down the bottom of the page here, we have the forum and support. If you're looking for online support here, we have it here. If you've got a question to post, you just need to log into our forum. Logging in and creating an account on the forum enables you also, as well as getting support, to remember your favorite radio stations. They're automatically listed here and you can choose and then log in from a different machine and access your favourites again as well. And finally, the products page on the Digisender website gives you an insight into the products that we've got up and coming, any accessories that might be available, a little bit more information about the product that you've purchased and some pretty exciting products that we've got lined up in the future. So make sure you keep in touch with us and uh, we'll keep you fully updated. Thanks.